Hello everyone, it's Lindsay, and today we're going to take a look at the new member of the Illustrating Bible family over at Dayspring. Now, I do want to give you a heads up that this was sent to me by Dayspring for review, so thank you Dayspring for sending that to me. But as always, you guys get my honest opinions, and that is why I am a little bit late getting this video out. So the team has had this in our hands for about a week or so now. Um, this is the Illustrating Bible Book of Luke. It is available for pre-order and will start shipping, um, I believe, November first, so very soon, right around the corner. Um, but I wanted to kind of sit on it and kind of think about how I'll be using it and how I think you guys will be using it before I hopped on um, to do this video. So I've had some time to think about it, do some research, get my things together. And so let's dive in and kind of talk about if you need this in your life or not. So what you may notice that this list looks very familiar to these two illustrating Bibles here. Um, this one here, the rose gold one, was the first one that Dayspring did. They did this in collaboration with Illustrated Faith. Um, this was, you know, total, like, revolutionary um, Bible for the Bible journaling world. This was specifically made and kind of tailored for all of us who do Bible art journaling. You've got the coil binding. Um, you've got huge margins in here, thicker pages, all that goodness. Uh, if you have not seen this Bible before, I have the reviews for both this one and um, the 2.0 version over on my blog. I'll be sure to link those down below as well as the videos that go along so you can take a look at those um, and kind of get an in-depth review. So this review for the Book of Luke one will be a little bit shorter, hopefully. You know, I'm always wordy, um, but I won't go into the details about all the products and all that goodness. But so this was version one. This one is no longer a available. Some people are still finding them in the Lifeway stores as they're going out of business. Um, you can still kind of find them here and there, but this is no longer in print. So they did go ahead and listen to your feedback. So there was a lot of feedback about things that you guys liked and didn't like about this particular edition. And so they came back and did a revision and did a second version. And so that's this uh, green, kind of emerald green one that they did. This one was not in partnership with Illustrated Faith. This was just Dayspring and um, the Christian Standard Bible, so CSB translation. And they made a little, a few changes. They kept the coil binding. They did change the, you know, cover color. The uh, margin space is still the same. The everything was the same except for the. Um, let me find one of them the titles at the beginning of the books weren't the scripty font that we saw in the first version. They kind of streamlined things and made the titles a little bit smaller. So again, sticking with thicker um, pages, lots of margin space. The one thing I really love about the coil binding especially in Big Mama like this, you can see she's just filling up like crazy, uh, is that you, it lays flat for one, so very easy to, even if you're not doing painting and all that kind of stuff, if you're just taking notes and writing, it lays flat. But on top of that, you can flip it around, so then you're just working on, you know, one page so it doesn't have as large of a footprint on your desk. But you can also flip it so it's just the one page. Um, on a flat surface. So if you're doing stamping and techniques like that and your Bible's getting chunky like mine is, you can lay it flat on your table and then you're just working on the one page. And so it's just nice to have all those options. Also with the coil binding, you know, I can stuff her full of all kinds of chunky dimensional pieces because that's what I like. And it's just going to grow and grow and grow and be able to expand with that um, coil binding. So they did do a few... Um, questionnaires over at Dayspring over the last year. I've seen them pop up. I know there was one, if not two, maybe three. Um, so if you're not signed up for their emails, definitely get on their email list uh, because they send those out periodically so that they can hear from you guys and hear what changes that you guys want to see. And so they did that. There was a lot of feedback about things that you guys liked and didn't like about this version. And so then that is how the Illustrating Bible Book of Luke was born. So a lot of us were saying how nice it would be to have individual books of the Bible. So let me hold these together. Now, of course, mine is already pretty full of stuff, so it's even larger than it originally is, but you can see the size difference between just the book of Luke, and then this one is the entire Bible, all 66 books of the Bible. So you can see much, much smaller 
much more manageable because people were like, oh, I love this Bible, but how am I going to take that places? How am I going to travel with that? How am I going to, you know, deal with such a big, or I have, you know, arthritis or some of these other things, health issues that make it so I can't lug around a big giant Bible like this. And so they heard your feedback and so they came up with individual books of the Bible. So right now they only have the book of Luke available. And uh, they are, this is just going to be kind of a wait and see and feedback from you guys. And that's kind of the nice thing about them rolling this out. Out, um, one book at a time and kind of slowly over time because then they can make adjustments and changes along the way if need be. So they do have plans to release other books of the Bible. I did check and ask specifically if they have plans to release all 66. They said not at this time. They're not quite sure what that's going to look like. I'm sure it depends on um, just how well this one is received. And there's certain books of the Bible like, you know, the book of Numbers, Lamentations, some of those books that, yes, while very important, that's why they are are included in the 66 books of the Bible are probably not ones that are going to be flying off the shelf. Not everybody's going to sit and do a, a study through the book of Numbers or the book of Lamentations. <laughs> so um, it'll just be interesting to see um, what they do with that and which books that they choose. So uh, let's talk about some of the differences real quick. So one of the things that I, one of many things that I really like about this change is the cover. So you'll see um, this is kind of an emerald green. They're going with a true navy blue. I know it's kind of hard to see in some of the pictures sometimes. I always try to be pretty accurate with my colors in my videos. Um, so it's a true navy blue and it is a gold, um, gold printing that they did on the faux leather, leather cover. So very similar to this, the full illustrating Bible. Now you'll see the coil bindings are obviously different, much bigger for the bigger one, but also in color. So this one is more of a coppery rose coal, like rose gold color. Well, this one is more of like an antique gold, like a true gold color. So the color is a little bit different. Um, but I mean, aesthetically, I, I don't get too caught up on that kind of thing. I want function. And so function, this, these two, the big ones have a soft, um, faux leather cover. For this one, because it's more marketed towards being able to take it on the go, is a hard chipboard type cover. So it's still that faux leather, but it is nice and stiff and has chipboard. And I'm going to say, I wish that we had done that with these ones. Um, I was just leaving these on my desk, but recently I've been stacking them in my Calyx um, shelving unit that sits behind me, so standing them upright. And I do get a little bit nervous because they can be a little bit flimsy because they're the soft cover. I mean, it does make it nice because it's, you know, nice and flexible and I don't have to worry about things breaking or, you know, be, it probably will wear, wear a little bit better being, you know, having that give of the soft cover. But standing up on a shelf, it does kind of want to be kind of sad and droopy. <laughs> so she has to be propped up with other things on my shelf. You're not going to have that issue with um, these smaller ones because they have the hard cover on the front and the back. So, and you can see much, much thinner than since only the book of Luke. I have seen some of your guys' questions about why the book of Luke. Well, why any book? They would have to start somewhere. Um, I'm not sure 100% why they chose the book of Luke, but one thing that I have noticed and I think would be great is that this would be perfectly timed to do an Advent study through. Uh, and so as we're, you know, going into and approaching the holiday season, um, to be able to do an Advent study through the book of Luke, I think would be really, really nice and have that all in one place um, would be awesome. Maybe do it with your kids. Maybe you want to do it with a small group, um, a group of women. Maybe you have a home group that you get together and do studies. So it would be really nice to do that. Now, you know, the book of Luke is, you know, several chapters, and so the Christmas story is going to be more towards the front. But then as you get to the back and you get towards, you know, Christ's um, death and resurrection, you can go into Easter. So you could do, you know, get, knock out a few holidays, do Christmas towards the beginning, Easter towards the end, and then you could have this really pretty illustrated um, book of Luke. So maybe even as a gift idea, if you wanted to go through ahead of time, you have, you know, a few a month, you've got the month of November to get this in your hand. And maybe you want to go through and um, illustrate the Christmas story and write prayers for your kids and then give it as a gift to your kiddos. I think that would be so sweet. I really love that we are talking about legacy Bibles when we talk about, you know, these um, 
art journaling Bibles is not just about putting paint on the page and, and that kind of thing. It's leaving a legacy that we can pass down to our families and to our kids. And so what a sweet way to have, you know, a personalized Christmas story in a book like this. So I think that would be a great way to do it. So let's talk about some of the other differences. Um, one thing you'll notice is that the translation is different. So the other two illustrating Bibles were the CSB, Christian Standard Bible um, Translation. And then they listened to your feedback. And this time they went around with the NIV translation. And I know you guys are going to come at me with the King James Version, New King James Version. Where is that? Why didn't we get that? I guarantee you that this is a decision based off of the feedback from those um, questionnaires that they did. And so while the King James Version um, party is very loud and proud, I don't blame you. Uh, I, it must be that more people were voting for a different type of translation than that. So I personally was raised reading the NIV translation. It's where I'm most comfortable. I do kind of jump between the ESV translation and the NIV translation. And of course, read now more the CSB translation now that it's becoming popular. And all that to say, it's very important to read multiple translations because they are that. They are translations from the original Hebrew and Greek. I have beat this dead horse like crazy. I talk about it every time we talk about translations. So check out those other review, um, review videos for the other Bibles if you have questions about that. That. Um, I kind of go into more details, but so yes, it's going to be the NIV translation for this one. As we open it up, you've got a soft cream inside cover. And then the pages are still the nice bright white pages, which I love. It's so hard to go back to my older journaling Bibles that have the cream paper because I've gotten spoiled with the white paper that is in these. It is that same um, thick paper, so thicker than a typical journaling Bible. I've done a full bleed through test. I know some of you guys were asking if I would do that in this video. I'm not because I've already done that in those past review videos. So you can find that in the videos and over on my blog. Um, I didn't do as much in this particular one. I think it's in the pink one. Let me grab the pink one and I'll show you. Okay, so this one had some blank pages in the back and I continuously do product testing in the back of here with inks and paints and embossing and all kinds of products all in here um, and keep track of that in here. So you can find this over on my blog and the videos that I did. It's going to be the same for the smaller one because the page, the paper is the same. So no need to do it again. Um, and another thing is that this smaller one does not have blank pages in the back. It's just got this one blank page that's the back side to the end of Luke. There's no extra blank pages in the back. So that is one negative I think. I would like to see changed in future individual books that they do. Um, just having a couple extra blank pages back there, whether it be to take notes, maybe journal down some prayers. I know a lot of people utilize those blank pages in the back. Um, I always tell you test out new products in the back. So if you don't have one of the original illustrating Bibles, you wouldn't be able to do that necessarily in here because you don't have those extra sheets. So if you've got questions about bleed through, just reach out to me and check out those reviews and I'd be happy to work with you on that because um, if you don't have the original then you don't have the ability to really test that out. Of course, you could test it, you know, on some of these um, beginning pages if you wanted to utilize those. So there is some space in there. All right, so opening up, you've got your title page. And then you'll see here that we've got that same, it's not, it's just shy of four inch margin space, huge margin space, you guys. I'm obsessed. Again, so hard to go back to my original um, journaling Bibles because I've gotten so spoiled with having all of the space. But uh, another thing I know many of you are going to be very, very, very happy about is the font size. So the original illustrating Bible was eight point font. And I know so many of you guys have moaned and groaned about this because I agree. I don't sit here and study out of this Bible. This Bible is solely for my art worship that I do and that, that type of thing. I do all my studies in other Bibles um, just for a couple reasons. The font is eight point here. It's 12 point in the new one, but also one thing, and this doesn't show it as well. Let me find a different... Here we go. So they had the verse address of so the verse numbers all on this left hand column here. So you'll see here 14 and 15. So this means that the verse 14 and verse 15 are within this line of text, but it was kind of hard to tell where line 15 it started. So, and that was always kind of a con for me. I kind of struggled with that. i never would like read out loud from this because I wasn't quite sure where the verse fell. And so that's one thing that they changed in this new one, which I'm so glad that they heard that feedback. So you'll notice 
notice that the verse numbers are within the line of text now. You've got also the chapter numbers are much larger. And again, like I said, that 12 point font. So much larger, much easier to read. Um, I, this is even larger than like a standard um, Bible, I would say. I think a standard Bible font is probably like 10 or 11. So this is even bigger than that, which is nice. Uh, I know that there's going to be the, some of you asking for even larger font. Um, I don't know if that's something that they're going to be considering. Um, always feel free to message the Dayspring customer support. They have an email over there. Um, and I'm sure if they had enough feedback, that's something that they would consider. And it is more realistic to do in these individual books. In the large illustrating Bible, that just wasn't able to be done. You can see how big that Bible is already. And if it was a larger font, it would just be massive. There's no way that that would work well. So this is a nice compromise to some of those things that we were missing in the um, fuller version. So you do have larger font, same margin space, um, and just, I mean, typical, you know, the book of Luke. I mean, nothing fancy. You can see you've got plenty of margin space. There's nothing, no titles. I will say one thing I still wish that they would do would be to move the title um, maybe to the top of the page instead of taking up some of the margin space. But um, because they've done a bigger font and stretched it out over multiple pages. It's only one page that I'm dealing with that title there. The rest of them are open and blank. And so um, you'll see, I'm not quite sure how many pages the book of Luke is in Big Mama, but um, it's significantly more pages in this um, smaller version just because the font is bigger and so they can stretch it out over, um, I think it's 45 pages. 49 pages. So you've got plenty of space to work in there. Um, and then in the back side, we've got just plain cream. And then on the back here is Day Spring and the NIV. One thing I want to point out, which I love about these um, faux leather covers, let me kind of get some of the stuff out of the way here is being able to customize. So this is something that I've been playing with is the foil quill pens from We Are Memory Keepers. And I went ahead and used that on my cover here and was able to get the same foiled effect as what they had printed on here. So this is a fun little way if you wanted to add some personalization to these, um, that is definitely an option for you. I'll link those videos down below if you're curious about this product and how I did that. Um, so I'm glad that I'll be able to do something similar with um, the faux leather that's on this cover. One, another super fun thing that they're doing is when you order this, like I said, it is the pre-order. There is limited stock. Um, I think they're just probably just doing like a test run to see how, how this is received, see what you guys think. Um, so they are going to go pretty quickly. So it's pre-order right now. And like I said, they'll be shipping on November 1st. And, um, uh, when you order it, you have the ability to get some free printables. So you'll see um, on the inside here, there's a download code that you'll get within here. I'm not going to show it because my download code's underneath here, but your download code is underneath this little sleeve here. Tells you how to get those free downloads that come with the purchase of this. And you get several pages of printables for free when you purchase the book of Luke. So um, they have got it all set up. I think this is great for beginners. If you are new to Bible journaling, new to the whole world, kind of intimidated by working in an entire Bible, um, this kind of scales things down, gives you a smaller chunk to work on. And then they have some great resources in these printables. So there's this um, Bible plan here from Christian Girls. And it's this is the little Bible plan. And I looked at the calendar and it looks like this is structured to go through the month of December. So day one all the way through 31. And each day has a chunk of scriptures. And then it has a fun little prompt, like make a collage of Luke-inspired pictures, doodle verse 48, decorate with scrapbook paper, use washi tape and stickers. So if you are new to Bible journaling, this would be a great way to kind of dip your toe in, get accustomed to it because each day it's giving you a set of scriptures to read and then a little prompt for how to journal that and how to tackle the blank page syndrome. So, um, or if you are a veteran journaler and just want to be able to kick back and not have to th stress and think about, you know, creating something new and exciting and, and where to even begin, you've got so much product 
product, you've been doing this for a few years, like I do, you have a lot of things at your um, disposal, this will kind of streamline things for you and give you a nice little plan to work through um, the month. So I hope that they'll do something similar as they do future books. It is kind of nice to work through an entire book. I've never read through the entire Bible in its entirety. Um, that's definitely a goal of mine. And because it can be intimidating as I'm looking at all 66 books, you know, from the very beginning. So this gives me a chunk of Luke. I can sit and work all through Luke and then we'll just kind of see what other um, books they come out with then. So you've got this one, the little Bible plan, and then they also include these really fun traceables. So these are several tr large um, lettered traceables. They've got the verse that it coordinates with. And so while these are thicker pages, they are still um, thin enough that you can trace things through and be able to see it. If you have some difficulty, you can use a thin light box. I will link one down below. I know Tanya from Messy Bible uses one all the time and she loves it. So I'll link, I'll get the information from her and I'll link that one down below for you guys. Um, and that gives you an option to use a light box to be able to trace this. But um, you can even print this on cardstock and use it as a tip in if you wanted to and just color it in. And these were all lettered by Megan Taylor. Megan Taylor did the Happy Hand Lettering book. This came out recently at Dayspring. I'll have this link down below as well. Um, it's this beautiful book that she did kind of teaching you how to do hand lettering um, and find your style and get comfortable with it. And one thing I was very pleasantly surprised with this book was that she also um mixes in let me see if I can find it there's like devotional content in here as well so she's got devotionals that go along with these hand lettering techniques which I think is amazing it also has some different projects to kind of inspire you with your hand lettering so great book if you haven't checked this out I will link it down below but so all that to say Megan Taylor did the hand lettering pieces for um, this part of the printable so you got several sheets of lettering there that you can use They've also got some little excerpts from the, um, it's the devotional doodle journal. It's similar to the hundred days devotional journals that they do over at day spring, but this is one I have, I don't have this one. I haven't reviewed this or looked at it, but this is an excerpt from the devotional doodle journal. So you've got some devotional content, some space to journal, and then some creative space. So you can either cut these apart and, um, use them as tip-ins in here, or maybe just use this as a jumping off point and kind of some devotional study um, to get you started in this book. So you've got a couple pages of those. I like that this is a little bit more masculine themed. So if you've got boys like I do, if you've got kiddos um, in your life and they're not all about all the florals and the pretty, um, this does look like it's a little bit more masculine. Um, and so it's kind of nice that you have that option as well. I had not even seen this when I was thinking of Christmas, but they also have um, in here some excerpts from The Shepherd on the Search. Um, this is kind of the biblical response to Elf on the Shelf. Uh, if you're familiar with Elf on the Shelf and that whole um, idea for kiddos, I know that's very, very popular. I never did it with my kiddos. Um, I did it tried one year and I just was not for me, but they did Shepherd on the Search. So it takes you through the Christmas story with a little shepherd. Um, it comes with like a little stuffed shepherd. And so you could kind of do something similar um, to Elf on the Shelf, but biblical based, which I really, really love that they give you that option. So I'll link those books and those resources down below for you guys as well. But this is the free printable that has some excerpts from that book with some devotional content, some scriptures to read, and then some fun little coloring bits. So if you wanted to jump in and maybe get one of these for you and your kiddos and work all together through Christmas. What a fun Christmas activity to do together and really kind of teaching our kids to be in the word and to find, you know, that it's not intimidating. It does not have to be intimidating. It could be fun. It's okay to color in their Bibles and to interact with their Bibles in that way. So you've got several pages here um, with that story. Now, if you'll remember, Dayspring was doing some of their own um, devotional kits there for a short little bit. And so now they've got this free printable here. It's kind of inspired by those devotional kits. They were the Women of the Bible, I think was the series that they did. So you've got some devotional content, some prompts, and then some space to journal. So again, if you wanted to cut these out and put them into the margins, you definitely could do that. So you've got several, several pages of those. 
again, all focusing in the book of Luke. So this is really giving you some resources for how to utilize this book, use it up. That's the whole point is to not just buy it and let it sit on the shelf and not want to fill it up. We want to fill it up. So this is giving you some options for that. And then that printable also includes some die cut pieces that you could print out on sticker paper or cardstock or something like that. And then it even has the lines to kind of give you a guide to cut it out, giving you some elements to utilize in here. And that's a, one of the reasons why I love having the coil binding is you can just stuff this full of all kinds of fun um, cut aparts and elements and things like that. So there Here's a look at the printables that you get. Again, these are all free that you get with that code when you purchase the Illustrating Bible Book of Luke. So if you guys have feedback, maybe certain books that you want to see coming out in the future um, or different things that you would like to see, send Dayspring an email. They might hate me for this because they don't know that they're prepared for this, but um, send them an email utilize that customer service. They want to hear what you guys are wanting and what, what you're desiring and what's going to make it easier for you to dive into the word of God and spend time in there. That is really what's most important. So, um, if you're doing maybe, um, a specific book study, um, and maybe it's not the book of Luke, but you would like to see Galatians or Ephesians or whatever it might be, send them an email and let them know. Um, and that might help them decide what book to come out in the future. And also we'll give them some feedback that just because you're not buying the book of Luke does not mean that you're not interested in this, you know, style of illustrating Bible and this, this concept that they have. And that way they can see that it is something that you guys are wanting. So there is a look at the illustrating Bible book of Luke. I may have missed a couple things. If I did, leave me a comment or questions down below. I'll be sure to pop down there and answer those for you guys. Check out those blog posts for the other reviews so that you can see in-depth details about the paper and how it reacts with product and all that goodness if you're curious about that. Um, so all those links will be down below, including the affiliate link for purchasing this and getting in on the pre-order. I have plans to kind of set this aside until December and then I will be working in this through the month of December. I have not decided exactly yet. Check out Bethany from uh, Southern Couture. I'll put her video review down below. She kind of has it on her heart to put something together with her Etsy shop. And so go give her some love, be praying for her. I know that that's something that she's thinking about. Um, creating something for the community to help us kind of journal through this together as an option. So definitely check out her video. Uh, if you're excited about this and excited about having some more, you know, resources for journaling, give this video a thumbs up. Subscribe to my channel if you're not already subscribed. And until next time, thank you so much. Bye-bye.